Uh, my first instrument was guitar. Actually, I think I got a harmonica when I was four. I went I was at the guitar store once. Um, my dad was taking lessons when I was about four and five. Um, but yeah, guitar was, that's, that's what I had my sights set on. And um, it's kind of been my only instrument all these years. <laughs> Um, well, I feel really lucky because I grew up with a combination of um, studying privately with people and very casually and taking lessons from, you know, f first with my father. He would go take guitar lessons, come home and teach me what he learned. And, uh, and then also I, I was studying at the uh, San Francisco Conservatory when I was really young. And, um, and also the Ali Akbar School of Music, which is more uh, Indian classical music and studying tabla and sitar. And then eventually Berkeley College of Music when I was a bit older. So, um, yeah, for me, it's, it's, it's kind of been this, you know, really incredible balance where, you know, there's obviously the academic side and the credentials are very clear when you go to these institutions and there's wonderful teachers and you, you, you get, you know, what you come for. But I've also studied with people who have, you know, who do something completely different. Um, for ex you know, uh, or people who haven't even been playing that long but have a really interesting conception of, how they do things in general. Um, so I try to, you know, study with everybody and, and take every opportunity I can. Mm -hmm. um, the, I, I, I feel very fortunate because I've had a few, more than a few teachers who were just kind of, you know, I'd consider them these beacons of light who not only showed me something but kind of pushed me more towards my own voice and the things I was interested in, very much a reflection. Uh, one of the biggest is Randy Vincent. Randy Vincent is a guitarist in uh, the San Francisco Bay Area, and he was my teacher from when I was about 8 to 12. And I would take two, three-hour lessons a week with him in those years, and it's just nonstop listening sessions, writing sessions, practice together, um, and just a really dear friendship. Um, also, George Marsh, great drummer from the Bay Area, and um, completely turned me on to the world of, you know, new music and free and avant-garde and kind of, you know, again, it was one of those things weekly. I'd go over, have lunch with him, play all day, just kind of too good to be true. Um, and then on another scale, someone like Gary Burton, you know, who I've been playing with since I was about 12. Um, total teacher and mentor in the, in the sense of just not only musically, but as a person, as a, as a business person, as a professional. Um, it's pretty profound influence he's had. And, um, and then very similarly, someone like David Grisman, who I started playing with around, a little before I started playing with Gary, I was about nine. Um, yeah, and that's more the acoustic world and, and how to run a recording studio and a label and how to, I mean, I, I'm so lucky. I cannot <laughs> express that enough. So I've had a lot of teachers. Wow, yes, my first paid gig, I think it was, um, I think it was for someone's, was I paid, actually? I might have to call him. No, I, I think I was about five or six years old, and it was someone's 50th birthday party. I remember playing part of this function, and it was a friend of the families who hooked it up, and if that wasn't the first one, there was something, I think it was, it was like a strawberry pancake festival in my town that I played, and I think I got paid for that. So, yeah, yeah, I had how much money did I, I think, God, I, if, if, I think I got $50 for the birthday party, and the other one was a full band, so it might have been a couple hundred dollars. Wasn't bad, wasn't bad. What did you do with that? You know, <laughs> what did I do with that money? Um, I, I'm trying to think now. Oh, I know I was, I spent it on something. I mean, I, I can remember when I was a teenager, I was really into skateboarding. I was obsessed. I was a diehard skateboarder. So anything I made went into skate videos or equipment. Um, and then prior to that, I was really into ham radio. And I'd get really into, you know, I never got my license, sadly, to be. It's not that sad. But, um, but I would get, you know, books on ham radio, Morse code, things like that. But I was a pretty nerdy kid, so I'm sure I spent it on, I don't know, something like that, a calculator or something. I, I don't recall the first jazz record I, you know, I ever purchased. I, 
I remember my parents had Joe Beam's Passerine, this tape cassette of that record, which is one of my favorite albums. And I listened to that a lot. My father had, um, I think he had uh, some albums by John Martin, the, is he Scottish or Irish? Or the singer-songwriter from the UK, who I loved. And um, I, yeah, at one point he had Giant Steps, John Coltrane, Giant Steps. Um, a lot of Stevie Ray Vaughan. I think I, I did save up my money. I bought a Glenn Miller CD at the mall, which I don't know. It's probably the only thing they had, but and it was great. And I loved it, and I I really cherished it. Um, but I I care. There was never really an aha moment with a record. It was just kind of like this is all pretty cool. Like and I still kind of feel that way. You know, uh, growing up, Jim Hall was my guy, you know, and he still is. And, and um, But there was there was a long period, I think this is just very natural how this happens, where you you come to know yourself as someone who loves a particular artist so much, and it's just assumed. So you're like, oh, of course, Jim Hall is great. People talk to me about it. Oh, I love him. He's my favorite. And then recently, it occurred to me that I hadn't actually listened to a few records, really great records that he had done, uh, some stuff with orchestra, um, and some things he had done as a sideman. And, and part of me was kind of embarrassed. I think, here I am saying I'm the, you know, the biggest Jim Hall fan in the world, and yet I've totally spaced on these albums. And going back, I find that I, I love them even more, you know, because I, I think I just see them from a different perspective. Maybe there's some context now where I go, wow, I, you know, not only is a great guitar playing, but at that time, given who was on the scene, given what he had done in his career, that's remarkable, you know. Um, and so it's, it's been really fun to kind of revisit those things that I just assumed I knew about and I knew nothing about, and I probably still don't know anything about. Um, another person who I've had the experience with is James Taylor, actually. You know, growing up, my parents listened to James Taylor, and we had a few of his records, but again, I said, oh yeah, everyone loves James Taylor, it's the best stuff, but now that I'm playing with more singer-songwriters and studying production more, I hear it and I go, God, he was really on to something, and it was so you know, kind of a once in a generation kind of thing. So it's fun to rediscover stuff. It's really nice.